These are unusual, eco-friendly innovations. Cheers. Cheers. From 2022, silverware good enough to eat? It can be part of your package if you hire Bartleby and Sage in New York to cater your party. They told CBS News serving food on a cheese-flavored edible spoon serves multiple purposes. We were an early adapter because we just thought that was a great way to serve the food and you can also eat the spoon and then your waiters don't have to go around picking up the dirty spoons. There are also environmental benefits of not having to wash used spoons or throw away plastic spoons. People are choosing these products because the client themselves wants something sustainable, wants something fun that elevates their menu. The products come at a higher price than their plastic counterparts, but the cost to the environment is much lower. This luxury purse came from Miss Orange. Jordanian food artist and molecular gastronomist Omar Sartawi created the high-end and eco-friendly handbag in 2022. While carefully cutting and peeling the orange, Omar showed off the beginning stages of his masterpiece. The orange hard case bag with golden accents took eight months to produce. It took trial and error, manually curing the orange leather, and laser cutting to shape it. Omar says he is now working on processing fruit and vegetable leather to create luxury goods not only for fashion, but for furniture too. Over the next 30 or 40 years, Omar hopes techniques like this will change the way we deal with waste while being friendlier towards the environment. From 2021, wooden buildings are making a comeback. This time, bigger, taller, and with an eco-conscious edge. Sarah House of Culture reaches about 250 feet into the air, and because it's made entirely of cross-laminated and glue-laminated timber, the new landmark is one of the tallest wooden buildings in the world. The House of Culture opened after six years of planning. Within the building's 20 stories are two art galleries, the city library, a conference center, restaurants, six theater stages, and a 205-room hotel. So why go back to old-fashioned wood? According to the International Energy Agency, the cement industry accounts for about 7% of global carbon dioxide emissions. The wood that built the Sarah House of Culture came from local sustainable forests. And to cut CO2 emissions from transportation, the wood was processed at a mill only 31 miles away from the building site. Electricity is generally through solar panels, and excess energy is stored in batteries that help power other parts of the city. The sprinkler system, an important part of any building, but especially one made of wood, is powered by renewable energy, where in most buildings, sprinklers are powered by diesel. In the fight against climate change, Sarah House of Culture demonstrates how old techniques married to new technology may be the way to go. In May of 2023, a Dutch company says it found the key to making death more eco-friendly, mushrooms. Its founder told CBS News. And I learned that they are the biggest recyclers on the planet, so I thought, hey, why can we not be part of the cycle of life? Loop Biotech created compostable coffins made out of mushroom roots and hemp fiber. It takes seven days to grow one of their coffins, and once buried, they decompose in 45 days. Well, here you have a piece of mushroom, and this is, this is really hot. There are even compostable urns for people who wish to be part of this natural process after cremation. Once the urn decomposes, the ashes feed a tree. And this is a shake-up, and this is different, and it's much more, I think, pure. Um, we're not becoming chemicals, we're not becoming burned, um, and we're just being taken care of by nature. The hope is to decrease the amount of steel and concrete used in the funeral business, letting people become one with the earth sooner. A pet funeral home in Colombia has an eco-friendly way of disposing of the dearly departed. It turns them into fertilizer. The Plia funeral home is a new sort of mortuary. When the pet has died, they collect the body of the deceased and bring it back to their facility. They'll make a paw print as a keepsake. The home offers counseling to humans to help them process their loss. Meanwhile, the home uses a natural process to break down the animal's remains with microorganisms. The resulting soil is then used to grow a plant or tree. It's a sort of reincarnation. That new life is brought back to the pet's family, along with the paw print and other things to help preserve the memory of the beloved. An arbor of trees is also nourished with the soil Plia helps create. It's a way of helping grieving families while also helping the environment 
and showing that there is indeed life after PET. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andreas Wundle.